Since the first series, there has been a big change in the lives of Mrs Gorman and me. It's not something I thought I would talk about on stage. Uh, to be honest, I thought it might be a bit too close to home. But the truth is, it dominates life so much that you can't really avoid it. It has changed our whole outlook. You know, all of a sudden, it's not just you. Um, I'll be honest, it wasn't planned. Um, the cat just followed us home, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. We, we have a cat now. Um, she doesn't always look like that. Sometimes she looks like that. Sometimes like that. But mostly like that. Um, and we didn't want a cat. We never talked about wanting a cat. We're not really cat people. But it was one o'clock in the morning and she followed us for a hundred yards and she was tiny and hungry and in need and we are human. And so we offered her some kindness. We couldn't bring her indoors. We didn't know if she was house trained. She could shit everywhere and ruin the furniture. It's the same reason we haven't had children. But we got an old cardboard box and a towel and we left that on the doorstep as a kind of makeshift bed. And I gave her a tin of tuna and we went to bed. And we got up the next day and she was still there as was the tin of tuna. So I gave her a tin opener and <laughs> we didn't know what we were supposed to do. We put up posters, we asked around, and when I asked people for advice, they all said, oh, take her to the vet and see if she's been microchipped. I had no idea that was a thing. People put microchips inside cats. I had no idea that was possible. Nobody microchipped cats when I was a kid. So we took it to the vets, where we discovered that she had no microchip, which means we couldn't find her owner. She hadn't had her jabs, she hadn't been, you know, done. And the vet gets out some forms and asks us to fill, fill them in and says, what's her name? So we're still dead set on trying to find the real owners, so her name wasn't really important, I just had to find something. I looked around, down there, there was a newspaper. I said the first thing that came to mind. I said, her name is HRH Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> And I wish I hadn't now. We have never called her that. That is not her name. Now that we've ended up keeping her, we call her Clancy. But I can't persuade the vet that that is not her name. The vet thinks she's HRH Queen Elizabeth. So I keep getting messages like this. <laughs> this is a reminder that HRH Queen Elizabeth is soon due a flea treatment. <laughs> reminder, HRH Queen Elizabeth has an appointment at 9.30 on the 5th of the 7th. Her vet will be, and obviously I've blanked out the name of the vet there. I haven't censored the sentence, her vet will be most honoured. <laughs> and my life, it is expensive. We've had to take her in for a jab, we've had to have her microchipped, we've had to, you know, let's be delicate, have her done. Not to mention all the food and the cat hardware we've had to buy. We are five or six hundred quid in a hole with this thing. And frankly, if the original owner came forward now, they can whistle. Because we're the ones who paid to have her womb removed. Moved. It swings and roundabouts, don't worry. We put a microchip in, we took a womb out. <laughs> we have turned our cat into a wombless cyborg. <laughs> and I'm sorry, that's an unpleasant phrase, isn't it? Wombless cyborg. <laughs> that's the unpleasant bit there, isn't it? Very difficult word to confront. And yet, so close. <laughs> so close. It's the little details, isn't it? Sometimes it's the little details. Yeah. We got a posh cat flap. We got one of these. Uh, as you can see, it works with your cat's existing microchip. Basically, the only thing that can get through this cat flap is our cat or something that has eaten our cat. <laughs> <laughs> and it stores up to 32 pet identities, which is handy if you've got a schizophrenic cat. <laughs> be encouraging anyone to let 32 cats through a door, should they? That's 288 lives right there. We had to get one of these cat flaps because there are some big boy cats in the neighbourhood that are more than happy to chase her all the way into our kitchen. What can I say? She's a pretty cat. Her milkshake brings all the toms to our yard, ladies and gentlemen, but it is a pretty amazing thing. That I like that. How, I want one of these for me. No, I'm not the biggest drinker, but there are times when I'm stood on the doorstep fumbling for my keys. That would be bloody brilliant, wouldn't it? I've spoken to a mate of mine who reckons he can take one apart and put the right bits in the front door. It's just the vet who refuses to chip me. <laughs> Apparently, it's not ethical, whatever that means. But anyway, we keep odd hours, myself and Mrs Gorman. I work in the evenings, I'm here right now. It's tricky to make sure that she gets fed at the same time every day. So we also uh, bought one of these. 
This is an electronic bowl that opens a compartment at whatever time you tell it to. And like the cat flap, this is amazing. But at the same time, all this means is that thanks to technology, we have a cat that is able to completely and utterly ignore us. <laughs> we love that cat, we pay for that cat, and we receive no catty benefits from that cat. She is using the technology that we have provided to avoid as much human interaction as she can. And you can't blame her, because we all do it. We all use technology to cut out human interaction. The other day, I did something I've never done before. I ordered a pizza online. I'm 43, that was my first ever time. I've moved house not so long ago. And because I've moved house, the place I used to call was no longer the right place to call. So I went online to find a new local place, and as I did that, I suddenly realised I didn't even have to call them. I didn't have to speak to a person. And why would I choose to speak to a person if I don't have to? I ended up at the website of a company called Pizza Go Go. I ordered one large pizza for the two of us, and when I went to pay, I saw this. Please note, we have automatically added cookie squares to your cart for only 99p. Promotional offer, if you would rather not have these delicious oven warm cookies, please remove them from your cart. What the hell? <laughs> you would never accept a human being doing that to you, would you? This isn't the man at the counter saying, would you like a drink with that? This isn't someone on the phone saying, do you want some garlic bread? This isn't someone trying to upsell you. This is you walking towards the supermarket checkout and a man in a Tesco uniform lobs a baguette in your basket. <laughs> and then when you complain, he just says, well, if you don't want it, take it out. <laughs> That's not on, is it? You can't go around putting stuff in my cart for me. A person would never do that to you, but a machine would. So why do we prefer to deal with machines? And we don't learn. When we wanted to get that cat flap fitted, we didn't shop around, we didn't ask people for recommendations, we just went to the website catflapfitters.com. I figured you can't get better than a cat flap fitter. <laughs> you know, they just seemed like the boys to trust to me. I mean, if they've registered that domain, I figured, well, they must be the best. As if being the first people to register a website is any kind of qualification for fitting a cat flap. So Mrs Gorman got in touch with them, and she got this text message by return. Here we go. Dear Beth, many thanks for contacting catflapfitters.com. Unfortunately, at this time, we are without a fitter, <laughs> so are unable to help. Our apologies, best regards, catflapfitters.com. I love this message. It's so polite. I mean, they're not doing anything wrong. It's just that they're not doing anything right either. More to the point, they're not really doing anything, are they? My favourite part is the we, the plural. The idea that there are several of them manning the phones, replying to all the inquiries, keeping the business going when they're unable to do any bloody business. Why haven't they updated the website to say that they're without a fitter? Why haven't they updated the website to invite people to apply for a job as a fitter? There's only one way of responding to a text message like that. You have to reply as Mrs Gorman did. Dear catflapfitters.com, many thanks for getting back to us. It is indeed unfortunate that you don't have a fitter at this time. HRH Queen Elizabeth is most disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? We've not heard a peep out of them since then. 